So class, we're discussing the play, the proposal, and we have uh, read about how uh, Ivan and Natalia, they're into a very heated argument regarding who owns uh, which part of the property, right? So they have uh, had an argument over the oxen meadows and uh, Natalia tells him that, see, this was an old agreement which was there between the family. And uh, Ivan says that you think that because it's been so long that your peasants have been living over there, you think that the land belongs to you, but it belonged to his aunt and he has inherited this land from his aunt, right? And then, yes, so uh, Natalia is not ready to believe. And uh, she thinks that as the, this land, it has been in their family for so many years, okay? And uh, he was uh, not, uh, you know, like uh, listening and either of them not listening and they were getting into this very, very heated argument. So the father also, he joins in and uh, when he comes to know what the argument is about, and he says that, haven't you seen the plan? Don't you know that uh, about the plan, whom the land it belongs to? And then they start calling each other names and start talking about the ancestors and all. And so it's a very bad way, the argument. Okay, right. So yes, yeah, so let's continue here. You Lomovs have had lunacy in your family, all of you, all, all, all. So Natalia is there, right, uh, giving the chorus. Your grandfather was a drunkard and your younger aunt, Nastasia Mihailovna, ran away with an architect and so on. And your mother was humpbacked, clutches at his heart, something pulling in my side, my head, help, water. Your father was a guzzling gambler. And uh, like, of course, Ivan, he's there getting into this argument, but his health is there not allowing him and his palpitations and his uh, heart, his head. He's there in a very bad situation. But Shubakov is not stopping. Your father was a guzzling gambler. And there haven't been many backbiters to equal your aunt. So your aunt was there gossiping about everybody. My left foot has gone to sleep. You're an intriguer. Oh, my heart. And it's an open secret that before the last elections you breathe, I can see stars. Where's my hat? So this is uh, Ivan and we have uh, Stepan. And we have Natalia, all three of them arguing. And of course, poor even his health is getting very, very bad. His foot has gone to sleep. You're an intriguer. Intriguer is someone very mysterious. And he's telling that there are so many things, you know, they're coming out with at the time of the argument. It's low, it's dishonest, it's mean. Now she's telling that it's bad to talk about someone like this. And you're just a malicious, double-faced intriguer. Yes. Here's my hat, my uh, hat, heart, which way? Where's the door? Oh, I think I'm dying. My foot's quite numb. He's in a very bad situation and he's leaving the house, following him. And don't set foot in my house again. He's very angry, Shubhokov. Take it to court. We'll see. Natalia is very adamant. If anything goes wrong, right, fine. We know how to sort it out. Devil take him. What a rascal. What trust can one have in one's neighbors after that? The villain, the scarecrow, the monster. First he takes our land and then he has the impudence to abuse us. So they're very angry. Look, he takes our land and now he's calling us names. He's talking bad about us. And that blind hen, yes, that turnip ghost has a confounded cheek to make a proposal and so on. What? A proposal? What proposal? Now Shubhakov is telling, when all the argument is there, they've come to such high tempers, Lomov has left, and now he's telling that he, in, look at him, such a person, and he's come to propose. Natalia is not away. What proposal? Why he came here to propose to you? To propose to me? Why did you tell me so? So he dresses up in evening clothes. The stuffed sausage, the wizen-faced from... He says, look at him, he comes in evening clothes and he's come to propose to you. And the poor daughter is not aware only. To propose to me, ah, falls into an easy chair and wails. Wails, she's crying. Bring him back, back. Ah, oh, bring him here. Bring whom here? Quick, quick, I'm ill. Fetch him. Who is she talking about? She's talking about even. Bring him back. What's that? What's the matter with you? Clutches at his head. Oh, unhappy man that I am. I'll shoot myself. I'll hang myself. We've done for her. 
and he's saying uh, like, look, uh, I, I'll shoot myself now. Look at it, uh, what uh, is going on in my family and how he's come and said all these bad things. I'm dying, fetch him. Foo, at once, don't yell, runs out, a pause. So Natalia is saying, I'm feeling very bad and I'm just going to die, you know, if you don't call him back again. Natalia Stepanovna wails, what have they done to me? You didn't tell me that he has come to propose and look at it. Now all my chances are gone. He's never going to come back. And what will happen to me? Fetch him. He's coming and so on. Devil, take him. Oof. Talk to him yourself. I don't want to. Fetch him. He's coming, I tell you. Oh, what a burden, Lord, to be the father of a grown-up daughter. I'll cut my throat. I will indeed. He cursed him, abused him, drove him out. And it's all you, you. Right, so Bukov is saying, look at me, my God, this daughter of mine, how difficult it is to be a father of a daughter. And uh, like first you're fighting with him, you're abusing with him. Now I have to go back and call him, right? And it's, uh, you were there fighting with him. Oh, no, it was you. I didn't say anything, it was you. Natalia has disagreed completely. I tell you, it's not my fault. Now you talk to him yourself. So Lamuam has come back. My heart's palpitating awfully. My foot's gone to sleep. There's something that keeps pulling in my side. He has so many health issues, poor thing. Forgive us, Ivan Vasilevich. We were all a little heated. I remember now, oxen meadows really are yours. Now she's come to her senses. Why? Because she wants him to propose to her. She says, no, those oxen meadows, they belong to you only. My heart's beating awfully. My meadows, my eyebrows are both twitching. The meadows are yours. Yes, yours. Do sit down. We were wrong. I did it on principle. My land is worth little to me, but the principle, he said, I was very correct. I said what was right. So the land might not be very expensive. Even uh, Natalia said that, you know, the cost of that land, she says that how much it would be. But uh, what is it? Yes, about honesty, about principle, what we have to agree on. The more so, Ah, yes, the principle, just so. Now let's talk of something else. The more so, as I have evidence, my aunt's grandmother gave the land to your father's grandfather's peasant. So this we had done yesterday. That how did they get the land? Because her, his uh, aunt's grandmother, she had given the land to Natalia's grandfather's peasants. Father's grandfather's peasants. So, so many generations. Yes, yes, let that pass. I wish I knew how to get him started. Are you going to start shooting soon? So now she's changing the topic. Don't talk about like Oxen Meadow. You said enough. I don't care whether the land belongs to you or to me, right? So she does not want to argue. I'm thinking of having a go at the black cock honored Natalia Stepanovna after the harvest. Oh, have you heard? Just think what a misfortune I've had. My dog, Guess, who you know has gone lame. So now they've started talking about something else. She's changed the topic of conversation. So are you going to go shooting after the harvesting? Yes, he says, yes, I will. But there's a very bad news. That is my dog, Guess, has gone lame. So one leg of his is hurt. What a pity. I don't know. Must have got his leg twisted or bitten by some other dog. My very best dog to say. Nothing of the expense. I gave Mironov 125 rubles for him. So yes, it's an expensive dog. I paid 125 rubles. It was too much, Ivan Vasilevich. I think it was very cheap. He's a first-rate dog. So yes, I, I think so. So he's a very good dog. And I, I don't think so. It was expensive. Papa gave 85 rubles for his squeezer. And squeezer is heaps better than guess. So what is Evan's dog's name? Yes. What is the name of Evan's dog? What's his name? Yes. Guess. Guess is the name. And what is Natalia's dog's name? Squeezer. Now what do you think the argument is going to be? Are they going to remain calm or are they going to get into another argument? Yes. Squeezer better than guess. Of course, he's better. Of course, Squeezer is young. He may develop a bit, but on points and pedigree, he's better than anything that even Volchanetsky has got. Right? So he says that, uh, yes, uh, they might be, you know, like what uh, 
you these dogs here much better and now they're going to have an argument regarding whose dog is better so squeezer is young but on points and pedigree he's better so yeah my dog might be younger than yours but when it comes to the pedigree that is about the quality and uh, right my dog is much better excuse me natalia stepanovna but you forget that he is overshot and an overshot always means the dog is a bad hunter so your dog is not the right dog for hunting so what is it overshot is he the first time i hear it i assure you that his lower jaw is shorter than the upper so this this makes it you know that he is not a kind of a fit for being a hunting dog have you measured yes he is all right at following of course but if you want to get hold of anything so because his lower jaw is shorter it's going to be difficult for the dog to catch hold of something and help in hunting what you can see that right that his lower jaw is shorter yes he's all right at following of course but if you want to get hold of anything in the first place our squeezer is a thorough bred animal so you cannot you know argue about his pedigree about his quality about his parentage the son of harness and chisels while there's no getting at the pedigree of your dog at all he's old and as ugly as a worn out camp house so your dog is very ugly we don't even know about the pedigree of your like it is not as good as my squeezer so now the argument is about the dogs he is old but i wouldn't take five squeezers for him why how can you guess is a dog as for squeezer well it's too funny to argue anybody you like has a dog as good as squeezer you might find them under every bush almost your dog is very common everybody has a dog like him 25 rubles would be a handsome price to pay for him you pay too much for your dog there is some demon of contradiction in you today ivan vasilevich first you pretend that the meadows are yours now guess is better than squeezer so today is a very bad day for you why are you arguing so much right i don't like people who don't say what they mean because you know perfectly well that squeezer is a hundred times better than your silly guess why do you want to say he isn't i see natalia stepanovna that you consider me either blind or a fool you must realize that squeezer is overshot so squeezer is overshot that means he is not a fit dog to go hunting with right and my guess is much much better but natalia says that squeezer with the pedigree is much better he is of a better quality than your dog but eva uh, says that uh, your dog it is uh, very common everybody has a dog like him but your dog is not fit for hunting it's not true he is it's not true why shout madam why talk rot it's awful it's time your guess was shot and you compare him with squeezer your dog is old he's not fit for anything it's time you shot your dog he should not not be there out uh, hunting and you compare your dog with squeezer excuse me i cannot continue this discussion my heart is palpitating so in the middle of the discussion what has happened to him yes yeah, so he is having his palpitations he's having a health problem i have noticed that those hunters argue most who know least so she says that yeah those hunters who don't know anything they are the ones who argue the most madam please be silent my heart is going to pieces shut up i shall shut up until you acknowledge that squeezer is a hundred times better than your guess a hundred times worse be hanged to your squeezer his head eyes shoulders there's no need to hang your silly guess he's half dead already so he's saying your a dog should be dead and she's saying your dog is already half dead he's so old he's lame also shut up my heart's bursting i shan't shut up enter shubakov what's the matter now papa tell us truly which is the better dog our squeezer or his guess stepan stepanovich i implore you to tell me just one thing is your squeezer overshot or not yes or no and suppose he is what does it matter 
He's the best dog in the district for all that and so on. You saying, so what if he is overshot? What, what, what is the issue with that, right? So yeah, your uh, dog is uh, the best uh, in the district, right? Or mine is the best. But isn't my guess better really now? Just imagine grown up people, they're arguing over their dogs, whose dog is better. Don't excite yourself, my precious one. Allow me. Your guest certainly has good points. He's purebred, firm on his feet, has well sprung ribs and all that. But my dear man, if you want to know the truth, the dog has two defects. He's old and he's short in the muzzle. So he says, yeah, your dog is very good. He's purebred. He's uh, good, you know, like uh, on his feet, he's well-formed, he's healthy, but your dog is old and your dog, what's the muzzle? Yes, like uh, the nose part, you know, that part, the short muzzle. Excuse me, my heart. So Lamov is having problems also. He's talking about his heart also. He's talking about his palpitations. Let's take the facts. You will remember that on the Marusinski hunt, my guest, ran neck and neck with the count's dog while your squeezer was left a whole burst behind. So remember, last time when there was a hunt, my guest ran with neck to neck with the best dog and your dog was left far behind. He got left behind because the count's whipperin hit him with his whip. Now the argument is taking another turn. So the argument is between whose dog is better. And with good reason, the dogs are running out after a fox when Squeezer goes and starts worrying a sheep. So of course, yes, he did need a whipping because all the dogs, they're chasing a fox and your dog started running after a sheep. It's not true, my dear fellow. I'm very liable to lose my temper and so just because of that, let's stop arguing. You started because everybody is always jealous of everybody else's dogs. Yes, we're all like that. You too, sir, aren't blameless. You no sooner begin with this, that, and the other, and all that. I remember everything. So yeah, because everybody's jealous of uh, others' dogs, especially when they, when they go hunting. But uh, yeah, you aren't blameless. So you know, sooner begin with this, that, and the other and all that. So you have started this argument. I remember too. I remember too. What do you remember? My heart, my foot's gone to sleep. I can't. My heart, what sort of a hunter are you? You ought to go lie on the kitchen oven and catch black beetles, not go after foxes. My heart, so she's making fun of him. Should go lie down in the kitchen. Don't go around chasing foxes. So you can't go for hunting. Yes, really. What sort of a hunter are you anyway? You ought to sit at home with your palpitations and not go tracking animals. You could go hunting, but you only go to argue with people and interfere with their dogs and so on. Let's change the subject in case I lose my temper. You're not a hunter at all anyway. And are you a hunter? You only go hunting to get in with the count and to intrigue. Oh, my heart, you're an intriguer. Earlier also he had called him an intriguer. And even now also he's called him an intriguer, okay? Right. 